as though we are suddenly painting on all of the audience's memory surfaces this actual work in real time and they see it being constructed right in front of them and indeed they're watching the actual construction of and the painting of this music but the actual canvas is in each person's mind that's when you feel as though this consciousness that is made up of everyone's individual consciousness, but the secondary level of a, a communal thing happens. And if you can keep a performance in that space, you can take the music and the audience anywhere. On the podium, David is always, it's always very clear that David is the smartest man in the world. He's a musical genius, and um, he has an intellect that runs uh, twice as fast as anyone I know. So usually he's way ahead of the game, but he has a very unique gift with um, contemporary music and music that's fresh on the page or that's been written yesterday or in the last 50, 60 years. And uh, he's probably the foremost expert in that regard. His creativity, his wonderful personality, his ebullience, his joy of life, his love of music, all kinds of music, and his, his amazing, IQ. He knows more about everything than you could possibly imagine. I live my life in this constant being right in front of not knowing anything. There's a wonderful picture that I love of Eve Klein and Klein is jumping off into the middle of the street and there's nothing underneath to catch his fall and he has this great joy of excitement and it's this sort of leap out into the middle of nowhere and that's a constant thing that you're doing. And uh, you just try and cope as best you can. <laughs> you have a sense of humor. Uh, you know, don't take yourself too seriously. Don't take it too seriously. Because nobody else will. <laughs> There's probably no other particular individual in St. Louis that's a better fit for being honored by the Contemporary Art Museum than David Robertson. He has been a wonderful addition to the St. Louis community, to this great orchestra, and has put St. Louis, the St. Louis Symphony, um, at the pinnacle. The actual real honest satisfaction is when some person from the audience comes up to you and you can just see, and they may not be able to say anything, and, but you can just see that, that what it is that you've given them. It's, just, it's an incredible experience to watch him work. I was lucky enough to have parents who allowed their children to follow all sorts of different strivings and, and interests and leanings. It's essential for everybody who's growing up to have the widest variety of opportunities to explore different things. And then when they find those things, that we as a society work very hard to maintain open doors for them to continue to explore and develop in those things because there are so many ways that people can give to society and feel fulfilled personally while they do that and we'd be much better off for that. David came to the St. Louis Symphony at a very important moment in its history um, when we really needed him to help show the community and the world that we were alive and thriving and he's done a fabulous job that we are still benefiting from. And this is what happens here. This is what this orchestra will give you. It's just incredible. I mean, I tear up now doing it because it's real, because it's like it's about something. And so then you come in as the conductor and people say, Maestro, what a great job you did. And you, you know, you, you sound self-deprecating, but it's, it's because you have this material with these people who are so unbelievably generous with their souls.
It's very cool. It's just very cool. And how do you keep it at that level? Yeah, you know. How do you do that? Dave? A lot of Kleenexes. Yeah. <laughs>